Hey guys, welcome back to part two of our easel making series. Thanks for tuning in. In part one, we went through the step-by-step -step process of how we make our L-shaped easel. Today, we're gonna go through the same process and show you how we make our C-shaped easel. Let's get started. My name's Eddie, and this is East Wing Vintage Woodworking. We're starting off at the thickness planer. All of our easels are a half an inch thick, so we have to mill down this three quarter inch walnut. As I pointed out in our previous video, all of our easels have their own templates. So here I am just drawing this out on the walnut before I take it to the bandsaw. This is a 10 inch bandsaw made by the company Win. I have to comment that for a relatively inexpensive bandsaw, this machine has worked out really well. I've been using it pretty heavily over the past year, and I have to say, it's durable, reliable, and it's turned out to be a great tool. Blade changing was easy too. I recently changed to this eighth inch blade, and it's worked out really well, allowing me to make tighter radius, you know, more detailed, intricate type cuts. If you're possibly interested in adding this tool to your shop, I'll put a link in the description below. This oscillating belt sander makes pretty short work of shaping these easels. Now, this is a relatively simple design, so it doesn't take that much effort. I'm setting up the router table to cut the channel on the easel. The channel is to be used to hold your decorative plate to keep it from slipping off. Whenever you're performing this type of operation with the router table, be sure to make your initial pass very shallow, and with each pass afterwards, you can increase the depth of your cut. You never want to try to remove too much material at one time. And attempting to remove too much material at one time can lead to disastrous results. Trust me, I know. Next, I'm going to install a quarter inch roundover bit, which is going to give a nice curve to the top of the easel base. Easy operation. Just watch your fingers. Next up, we're going to make the supporting rod that goes onto the top of the easel. Right now, I'm installing my taper cutting jig onto my crosscut sled to make this process possible. The supporting rod is going to be a half an inch thick at the bottom, and then it's going to taper up to a point from there. We're using the taper cutting jig to hold down the workpiece at the desired angle, lining up the half inch mark with the curve of the cross cut sled. Here is a better camera angle to give you an idea of exactly what's happening. We're going to trim these supports to six inches. I cut these pieces to the desired length off camera, so here I am now shaping the top of each one. Thank you. 
standing, O oh joy. Using the small detail sander is really helpful for getting into all the little tiny spaces. These pieces are relatively small, so sanding them is really not that big of a deal. I start out with 220, then I go to 320 grit sandpaper. They come out perfect and baby smooth. We use a dowel rod to connect the rear support brace to the base of the easel. We do this by drilling a quarter inch hole in both the support bracket as well as the base. While you're watching this footage, I want to take the next couple of moments to talk to you a little bit about our shop, eastwinkvintage.com. Established in 2016, Eastwink Vintage focuses on providing its customers with access to hard to find vintage and antique interior products. With over 1,200 listed items, we carry a variety of home decor and salvage pieces, hardware such as brass door and cabinet hinges, unique drawer pulls, doorknobs, lamps and lighting parts, kitchen, dining, and glassware accessories, hard to find antique holiday and religious items, wall decor, and of course, our handmade easels featured here in our videos. Our customers include, but are not limited to, interior designers, individuals looking to remodel their home or workspace, people looking for that one-of-a-kind decorative piece, and various film production prop shops. I encourage you to check out our site. I'll put a link in the description below. Our customer requested that their easels be painted in a whitewash. My lovely assistant decided to take over this part of the operation as she knows I'm not very good, nor have any real desire to do any painting. And just to let you know, if you have any desire to purchase any of our easels and there's a particular color scheme you have in mind, just let us know. We're happy to accommodate. Well, here's the finished product. Made entirely of walnut, this easel is four inches deep, four and a quarter inches wide and six inches high. It'll support plates from six to 10 inches in diameter. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please smash that like button and be sure to subscribe for future content. See you next time on East Wing Vintage Woodworking.